Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really easy corner-to-corner -corner hand towel worked in double crochet boxes. You're going to need some worsted weight number no. 4 cotton yarn. This is Lily Sugar and Cream. The orange color is called Hot Orange, but my original hand towel is worked in this cream color which is called Accrue. Together with this worsted weight yarn, I'm using an H8 5mm crochet hook. This is my favorite crochet hook that I custom ordered from Sienna's Boutique on Etsy, and I'll link it down in the description box below. The corner to corner technique starts with one box in the corner. You build outward until you reach the width that you're looking for. Then you maintain the same number of boxes until you get to the height that you're looking for, and then you decrease back down to one box. With the nature of this stitch pattern, you can really use any yarn that you have in your stash with the respective crochet hook, and then just make sure you have a soft tape measure handy so that you can measure as you go. Gauge is not essential for this project, but I will provide that information in the description box below for you. I have instructions for three different sizes. They're all going to be the same length, but they're going to be different widths. So the regular width is a standard hand towel size. Then you have one that is equal to if you folded your hand towel in half, and one that is equal to if you folded your hand towel in thirds. And these smaller ones are great if you're going to hang them from like a wooden ring. They fit a lot better and they still work just as great. You'll find the written pattern for all three sizes as well in the description box below. I've already worked my entire hand towel up, so I'm only going to be showing a small sample of it. But we will go over the corner to corner pattern as well as the reverse single crochet and weave in our ends together. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a slip knot. So I've pulled the yarn over my fingers here. I'm going to wrap it around my index finger two times. Hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop on the left up over the other one but not off my finger. Then I'll pull the one on the left up and over the other one and off my finger. Take my crochet hook insert it into the loop on my finger and pull it off. I'll hold the working yarn in my right hand, pull the short tail end with my left, and it will tighten this up to normal tension. We're going to start with a chain six. To chain, we yarn over and pull it through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through. This gives us these V shapes here. Each one of those is a chain. One, two, three chains. I'm going to continue so that I have six chains. We don't count the loop that's on our hook. We're going to double crochet into the fourth chain. One, two, three, four. Yarn over Insert your hook right into the center of that chain, yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. We're going to continue double crocheting into each of those last two chains, so yarn over, insert our hook into the center of the next chain, yarn over and pull through. Three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the center of the last chain, yarn over and pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And this creates our first box and row one. Each box is going to be comprised of four stitches. So we have the three double crochets that we just finished working and then the skipped chains here on the end are going to count as our fourth double crochet. For row two, we're going to start with a chain six. There's going to be two different ways that you're going to start your rows. When we want to add a box, because we are increasing, we're going to start with a chain six. Once we've reached the size that we're looking for and we're no longer going to be adding boxes, then we're going to be slip stitching over. 
So for this first part, until we get to the size that we're looking for, we're going to be increasing. So we're going to start them all with a chain six. And we'll work down this chain the same way that we did in that first box every time we start with a chain six. We don't count the loop on our hook. We're going to double crochet into that fourth stitch. One, two, three, four. And then double crochet into each of those next two chains as well. And that gives you four stitches the three double crochets plus the skipped chains. And now we have an alligator mouth shape. We're going to take that bottom square, flip it so it's mirrored, and we're going to slip stitch join to the top chain. It's going to be the stitch that is the most natural for you to lay these two squares together, and it's that stitch right there next to it. You can also count from the bottom one, two, three, four stitches. That's where you're going to slip stitch join. We'll insert our hook into the center of that chain, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on your hook. That's going to be a slip stitch. We're going to do that to secure all our boxes together. For all the boxes in the middle, we're going to start them with a chain two. And this chain two is going to count as our first double crochet of the box. Looking at this box here to the left, you can see that the stitches look horizontal. We're going to be working our double crochets into the space that is right here in the middle in between the chain on the top and the stitch underneath that. Yarn over, insert your hook right into that center space in between the stitches picking up that top stitch on your hook and complete your double crochet. Now you can see the space really well. We're going to work one more double crochet into that space, inserting our hook right into the center of it. When I work on the edge, I like to work into the foundation chain. It helps me get a straighter edge. So when we're working in the middle or on the last box, we're going to start with a chain two. In the middle, you work all three of your double crochets in that space. On the edge, I like to do just two in there and then the last one in that foundation chain on the left side. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into that next stitch on the left side, the foundation chain right in the center and this is the chain that is connected to that double crochet that is just below where you just worked your two double crochets. It's that third double crochet there. And now row two is finished. And we have two boxes. For row three, we're going to start with a chain six. We're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, not counting this loop. One, two, three, four. And then double crochet into each of the next two chains. And there's our first box from this third row. We have the alligator mouth shape here. So we're going to take that bottom fabric flip it up so it's mirrored and we want to slip stitch join to that top chain you can either count over one two three four stitches or lay your boxes flat together and it's the stitch that is the most natural one for you to work into next insert your hook into that stitch yarn over pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook to complete a slip stitch and now the boxes are secured together. Now we're going to finish our next two boxes starting with a chain two. And this chain two counts as our first double crochet. 
Here in the middle section we're going to work all three of our stitches into this space and for the last box we'll work that last one on the edge. I like to fold down the fabric on the left side so that it doesn't get caught in my crochet hook as I work. Looking at this next box we can see the stitch on the top and then the stitch underneath it we're going to be working into that space in between both of those double crochets. So we'll yarn over, insert our hook right into the center of the space in between the stitches. We have that stitch on our hook and we're going to complete the double crochet. We'll work two more stitches into that space. This will give us four stitches in total and that will complete our second box here. Flip up my fabric on the left side, count over one, two, three, four, or lay your boxes together and slip stitch join to that top stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook, and now these boxes are secured together. We have one more box left to work, chain two, two double crochets into the space in between those last two stitches. and one double crochet on the foundation chain on the left side. And again, working on that foundation chain is just going to help me keep a straight edge. And now row three is complete and we have three boxes. As you can see, with each additional row that we're working, we are increasing our box count. So we started with one and now we have three. We're going to work one more row together. As long as we're increasing, we're starting with a chain six. Then we're going to work down the chain, working a double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains. Now we flip that bottom fabric so it's mirrored, slip stitch join to the top stitch, fold down the fabric on the left so it doesn't get caught in your crochet hook as you work, and for all the boxes that are not the first one where we increased, we're working a chain two to begin. Three double crochets into that space in between those last two stitches. Bring that fabric back up, slip stitch join to the top of the next box. Fold down that fabric on the left chain two and work three double crochets into that space in between those last two stitches. Unfold my fabric, slip stitch join to the top stitch, chain two, two double crochets into that space in between those last two stitches. one double crochet into the foundation chain on the left side. And there's row four complete with four boxes. And now you'll just continue increasing in this manner until you reach the size that you're looking for. That can be either width wise or height wise and then we start decreasing. To count these boxes as long as you're still increasing, you can count the diagonal that you have here. One, two, three, four boxes. That's four rows. Or you can count from that very first box up. One, two, three, and four. That's going to change once we start decreasing, but for now you can count this way. And you don't even need to count if you don't want to. You can lay it down, take a soft tape measure, measure from the edge of the left side, 
over to the edge of the right side. I always like to start at the number one on my ruler for a more accurate measurement. And when you get to the size that you're looking for, then you can stop increasing. So I'll put up a chart now showing how many boxes you're going to want to have depending on the size that you're working. And then we'll work on decreasing together. Now that we have all our boxes here, we need to start decreasing on this size so that we can start to form our straight edge. That means we're no longer going to be increasing here, no more chain six in working down the box on this side. We're going to be slip stitching over. We're going to continue to chain six and build our boxes on this side so that we can make this side longer until we get to the size that we're looking for. So each time you begin from this side, you're going to start with a chain one and turn. You'll slip stitch into the second double crochet there, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and loop that's on your hook, slip stitch into the third stitch, and slip stitch into the fourth stitch. Then we'll chain two, and now we're in a position to work our first box into this space here in between these last two stitches. Pull up my fabric here and slip stitch join as normal. And I'm going to pull up a loop here. This is what the side is going to look like. It may look a little wonky. You can use your fingers to manipulate the fabric if you want to. When you add the border, it's going to cover this up and straighten it out. But here's the side where our edge is forming. Now I'll continue working as normal in pattern all the way until I get to the very last box up here. I'll chain two and work my final box. Now that we're no longer increasing on this side here, we're going to be maintaining the same number of boxes until we get to the next point where we're going to start decreasing. So I'll work across to my last box and then I'll be back with you to get you started for the next row. I worked all the way across my row, including the last box on the top. Each time we work from this side, we're going to start with a chain six. Then we'll work down our chain as normal to form our first box. Turn our work, slip stitch join, and continue in pattern all the way until we get to the last box. Here we're making this side longer, that's why we're starting with a chain six. Once we get to the last box and we slip stitch, we are not chaining and working above it because we do not want to add any more height to that side. And with these two rows worked, it's a lot easier to see that side. So once you get to that last box, it'll be easier to know that that's where you need to stop. And you'll see that edge right there continue forming. And we'll continue working in this manner until we get this side to the size that we're looking for. I'll go ahead and put up a chart that shows how many boxes you're going to want to have. And to match the boxes in this chart, just count from that very first box all the way up. It's not the same as counting the rows in corner to corner boxes, but this will be a quick and easy way for you to match the number of boxes that I've provided in the chart. I'm going to work off camera once I get all my boxes here, then I'll be back with you so that we can go ahead and start decreasing. Now that we have reached the size that we're looking for, we are no longer going to be starting either side with a chain six. We are going to start both sides with a chain one and turn. We're going to slip stitch into the second double crochet, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and through the loop on your hook. Slip stitch into the third stitch and slip stitch into the fourth stitch. Then we'll chain two, and now we're in a position to work that first box into that space right in between those last two stitches. 
slip stitch join as normal, and continue working all the way up to the last box. Once we get to that very last box and we slip stitch, we are not going to chain two and work another box on top because this is as tall as we want it to be. With each row that you work, you're going to see that you're decreasing by one box and we'll keep decreasing until we get down to one box in the corner. So let me work across here. I'll show you again how to start the row and then I'll leave you to it. Here's my last box of the row. I'm going to slip stitch here. Not chain two. My row is now complete. And to start the next row, chain one, turn, slip stitch into the second double crochet, into the third double crochet, and into the fourth double crochet. Chain two, and now I'm ready to begin with my three double crochets into that space in between those last two boxes. And here you can see the edge growing. And you'll work across there. Once you slip stitch your very last box there, you won't work anything on top of that. You'll just chain one, turn, and work back the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and work off camera until I get down to my last box. And then I'll be back with you so that we could add our border. There's my last box. I have just one there. I finished all the rest of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch join. You don't have to put a border on if you're happy with the shaping and the way it looks, the width and the length, all that good stuff. You can just fasten off now, but I am going to add a border. I'm going to start with a chain one and I'm going to turn. There is no right side and no wrong side because we've just worked in the same color throughout the whole thing and we've turned with each row. So you don't have to turn, but I think it's easier to work into this stitch by turning. This is going to be a really easy, simple border all the way around. In the spaces here in between boxes, that's where we're going to work our single crochet. So I'm going to insert my hook right into the center of that space, yarn over and pull through. I have two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. That's going to complete a single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet in between this space, in between all the boxes. Over top of the boxes to get there, we're going to chain two. And in every corner stitch, I'm going to work a single crochet, insert my hook, yarn over and pull through, two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. Then I'll chain two and single crochet back into that same exact stitch. Insert my hook, yarn over and pull through, two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. And you could do a variety of ways. You could do three single crochets in there. You could do single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. You could do single crochet, chain one, single crochet. The more chains you do, the more square of a corner you're going to have. Or if you did a half double crochet in there, it would give you a more square corner. With the chain one or three single crochets, you'll have more of a rounded corner. So you can experiment with different stitches there and see what you like for your corner. Over top of the box, I'll do a chain two, and that gets me to the next space that's in between those two boxes. I'll insert my hook right into the center of the space, yarn over and pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Chain two, single crochet into the space in between the next two boxes chain two, single crochet in the space in between the next two boxes. And this is going to be my pattern throughout the whole border. I'm just going to work all the way around with a chain two above the box and then a single crochet in the space in between the boxes. And when I get to the corner, I'll work one more chain two over this last box. In the very most corner stitch of the box, I'm going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then I'll chain two over the other side of the box and then begin again with the single crochets in between the boxes. 
and if you've modified your first corner just make all your other corners with the same stitch pattern so it matches. I'll go ahead and work all the way around and then we'll join together. Here's my last single crochet. My next one is right here, the one I started the round in. So I just have one more chain space to work here. And then I'm going to insert my hook into that very first single crochet, picking up both loops of the V shape, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and through the loop that's on my hook. After you slip stitch join to your very first single crochet of the round, you're going to chain one. Typically we work our stitches counterclockwise. For a reverse single crochet, we're going to be working clockwise. And the stitches are going to be worked the same way. So for a single crochet, normally we would insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. That completes a single crochet. We're going to be working that same way. We're just going to be working backwards or reverse direction. Hold the tension of the loop on your hook, lean your stitch over to the right, and insert your hook into that chain space behind you. Yarn over and pull through. There's two loops on your hook. Your original loop is on the right side. Yarn over and pull through both loops. Hold the tension of the loop on your hook. Lean your stitch over to the right. Insert your hook into the next single crochet. Yarn over and pull through. Two loops on your hook with the original loop on the right side. Yarn over and pull through both loops. Hold the tension of the loop on your hook. Lean your stitch over to the right. Insert into the next chain space. Yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook with the original loop on the right, yarn over and pull through both loops. As you can see, we're working it the same way as we did our previous round of single crochet. We're just working them backwards. And the reason why I suggest holding the tension and laying your stitch over to the side is so that the stitches don't bunch up on top of each other. It's really easy for the stitches to get caught in the previous stitches worked and then they just look bulky and inconsistent. So I find that that's the easiest technique to get them to lay nicely. And you'll just continue working in this manner all the way down until you get to the very first corner. Once you get to the corner, you're going to have one stitch in each stitch of the corner. We're not going to increase in the corners because the reverse single crochets are a little bit larger, so they're gonna take the place of increasing. So we'll just work one single crochet into the first single crochet of the corner, one single crochet into the chain space of the corner, and one single crochet into the next single crochet of the corner. That's going to bring you around so that you can work across the next side. And you're going to repeat the same process, working one stitch per chain space and one stitch per single crochet. When you get to the next corner, You'll work one single crochet into the single crochet, one single crochet into the chain space of the corner, one single crochet into the next single crochet of the corner. And then you'll continue all the way down. And you'll continue working all the way around until you're back to the beginning. I'll be back with you then so we can finish this round together. I will be showing it with a different tutorial that has worked in the round, but the same concept is going to apply. And now I've made it back to the beginning. Instead of slip stitching the round, I like to just finish here, fasten off my yarn, pull up on this loop here to break it, then I'll thread that into my tapestry needle. And then I'm going to insert into the top of the very first reverse single crochet that I made, and I'm going to go from the wrong side through to the last one that I made. And now I'm ready to weave this in on the wrong side. 
Because this has worked in one solid color and we've turned each row, it doesn't matter which side is the right side or which side is the wrong side. But I like to go with the direction that my border is worked in here. So where I slip stitch joined, that side that I was working from is going to be my right side of the fabric where the stitches look a little bit more defined and pretty in the border. And the other side of the fabric is going to be my wrong side or the back side. And I'm just going to have all my ends woven in on the back side. All of them are going to be worked exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's where you had to add a new ball of yarn or if you're working from either of the two ends. I'm going to be working mine each with three passes. That's my magic number. If you feel comfortable after working two passes, then you can go ahead and fasten off. If you feel like you need a little more security, you can work four. Whatever you feel the most secure with your ends. I also don't pick up the whole entire stitch on my needle. When I enter and exit, I always insert my needle into the middle of it to break it in half. And that's going to help capture my yarn better. And I do like to work into one stitch itself here, but you can also work over and then into the bulkiness of the cluster here. Just make sure that you definitely manipulate your fabric as you go so that it doesn't bunch up too much. I'm going to insert my needle into this nearby stitch, breaking it in half. I'm going to run it up vertically here. And I'm going to break the last stitch in half when I exit. Hold the fabric in between my middle finger and my thumb to help so it doesn't bunch up quite as much. Give it a tug. Use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to, if it has bunched up. I want it to lay naturally here. And then I'll go ahead and turn. Insert my needle into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half. Run it back up through several of the stitches I just finished working into and then break my last stitch in half when I exit as well. Hold the fabric in between here as I pull through. Give it a tug. Use my fingers to manipulate the fabric if I need to. And I like to do three passes so I'll rotate once more so I can work back in the same direction inserting into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half, up through several of those same stitches and break my last stitch in half when I exit. That's how I do all of my passes. And now I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and fasten off. And I'll go ahead and continue doing the same thing with all my ends here. I'll just work one vertically up here and this other one will go horizontally into the bulkiness of that cluster right there. And I have a couple more so I'll just continue off camera to get all my ends woven in. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. You'll find the written pattern for it linked in the description box below. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.